Welcome back to the Modern Ham, where we are connected in new old ways. Today, I have an antenna deployment, POTA activation, and antenna review. So, I want to go ahead and give a shout out and say thanks, Chameleon, for sending me your infed, uh, your lightweight infed half wave sloper. They did send me this uh, this product, so I just want to go ahead and clear the air. That does not cloud my judgment on reviews. I'm still going to be honest with you guys, just like I always have been. Let's go ahead and get into it. Let's talk about what this antenna is. We talked about in the last uh, antenna review, an infed half wave is an infed half wave. This is a 49 to 1. It's going to do what other 49 to 1s do. What sets these antennas apart is always going to be their functionality, how they work in real life, their durability, how they last, and what they're advertised for. Uh, and how they match up against their competitors. What is the infed? What is the lightweight infed half wave sloper? Uh, this is a 80 through 10 meter infed half wave by Chameleon. It is made to be lightweight, backpackable, uh, and portable. And what makes this antenna unique is typically backpacking antennas are made for QRP, so they only support you know 30 to 60 watts digital, maybe 100. Maybe 100 watts single sideband, usually not infed half wave. Uh, but this antenna right here boasts 500 watt support on single sideband, 150 watts on digital, which is more than anything that I would ever use. But now they, the people who are doing QRO, summits on the air, parks on the air, and who like infed half waves now have a lightweight option. So what does it come with? So we have a wire winder and it has a 49 to one unknown onto it. There seems to be some type of like rubber protecting that kind of contains all the components and protects them from the elements. We also have what I believe to be 63 feet of copper clad Kevlar. Uh, I forgot what gauge the wire is. I'll probably throw it on screen, but that is the first portion of the antenna. There's a tap on here also on the antenna that makes some of those other bands resonant. Um, it comes with an SO239 connector with a protector on top of it. It also comes with a uh, micro, what Chameleon calls type 90 paracord. That might be a standard, I'm not sure, but it comes with that. And also it comes with an addition of what I believe this is a 67 feet uh, copper clad Kevlar wire. And this will make the antenna uh, work on 80 meters. So you can take this, if you only do 20 or 40, you have the option to just take this bit here and if you like to get on 80 meters you can take this too so I kind of like the fact that this is modular you don't have to bring all the wire with you if you don't want to I like the fact that all of this wraps up on the wire winder which is also the antenna uh, it makes it a lot more lightweight because now you don't have to have an enclosure and extra wire winder and all this other stuff so there are some drawbacks to that every antenna is a compromise and we'll talk about them in just a second I'm going to go ahead and say this is not a QRP antenna, so this is heavier and it is more expensive. It supports a lot more power than a QRP antenna. So uh, as much as I'd like to compare it to the Reliance here, so the Reliance being coming in a little over half a pound with the wire and everything, it only supports, I think, 60 watts digital. Uh, so it doesn't support a ton of power, but this is a QRP antenna, and that is much different than the QRO antenna that the infed uh, halfway sloper is or the lightweight infed halfway sloper is so what i'm trying to say is this antenna is for a niche market typically your summits on the air folks your your portable backpacking folks are using qrp rigs qrp antennas but there are people out there that like to use qro rigs uh on the go and also for mcom or survival they might not want qrp maybe they want more power and this is a great option because it allows you to get all of that power out of your antenna with, uh, but also strip away some of the things that would add weight to your backpack or your kit that you necessarily don't need. So this antenna comes in on say at 225, so that is a premium price. But again, you can't compare it to uh, say base station antennas that are meant to just stay outside all year long because they usually have heavier uh, weatherproof kits that make them kind of bad for backpacking. You also can't compare it to QRP because this thing supports 150 watts digital, where typically your QRP is between 20 and 60 watts digital. So this antenna would be great for people who love to pack out radios such as the FT891, because this antenna is resonant on 
80, 40, 30, 20, 17, 15, 12, and 10. Uh, it, it, two to one advertised on all of those bands. We'll probably throw it on an analyzer while we're out there just to make sure. But if you throw this on a QRO rig like the FT891, boom, you don't need a tuner anymore. And you can pump out the full 100 watts as you please, whether that be a digital or, or CW or single sideband. And you can go all day. So there's not many in-fed half waves that are lightweight on the market that are resonant on all those frequencies that will let you do that. So we're going to do a activation, a POTA activation out today. I'm going to bring it out in the woods and we're going to see how it works in the real world. Chameleon recommends that we use their uh, RG58, I think it is, with the uh, embedded RF choke. And they also sent me this, so thank you for that, Chameleon. Uh, so I'm going to be using that with the antenna and I'm going to be uh, putting it up in the recommended configuration as best as I can. Again, I want to say before I get out there, a 49 to 1 is going to perform like a 49 to 1, right? So I don't want to spend half the video just making contacts because it would have been the same with this if I was using low power. Uh, the video is about the durability, the functionality of getting it deployed, wrapping it back up, and just the whole process of how this thing works. With that out of the way, Let's go ahead and get out there and have some fun. All right, so here we are at the Vernon Douglas State Nature Preserve. It's actually where I did my Reliance antenna review. Basically the same spot. Took some lessons from last time for my portable setup and we're gonna try it out this time. I hiked out here with a backpack and uh, let's go ahead and uh, bring out the antenna. See how it works. I managed to get the entire antenna set up all inside of this bag, including the transmission cable. Let's take a look at that real quick. The arbalist, the mixer paracord, transmission line, the entire antenna basically fit in here. So I'm going to go ahead and bring that out. Um, my transmission line and the extra 80 meter, 80 meter element. I think that's way more than 25 feet of paracord, so I could probably cut that. Save myself a little bit of time. Alright, so there's my arbalist throw line. Now I'm going to go ahead and um, unwind the actual intelement antenna element. What I like about the wire, the, the slick wire on these, the chameleon that uses, it doesn't tangle very easy. But there's something about this slick material on the chameleons that uh, help out a little bit with that. And it is, it's pretty cold out here. I forgot to mention, I think it's like 35 degrees. I wish I had some gloves on. By the way, again, I was out here before doing an activation, but um, I only assumed that you only needed four contacts, like summits on the air. It was my, like my first POTA, I think. So um, now I know I need ten. So we're going to be out here to get ten today, and being able to use QRO is definitely going to help out with that. All right. So the main antenna element has been unwound. So now I'm going to take my throw line, and the first thing I want to do. Well, picked the wrong end. First thing I want to do with this throw line is get the antenna up in the air. Step one. And I'd like to do it about over this log since I'm sitting on top of it. I think it's a nice place to sit. With this being a vert, I typically put my dipoles, uh, typically put the V point on the ground and that, uh, and slope it upwards. And that helps out with some uh, interference that you might get. But because we have the uh, RF chokes here on the end, I think that'll help if we put this near the transceiver instead. Um, that way the vertical transmission line won't pick up a lot of vertical polarized uh, interference. So we're going to connect the other end, in this case, to the antenna. With these antennas, I do not like this being just straight out on, uh, if, if it's meant to be hoisted up. So I do recommend if you get this antenna, get an L connector. We'll talk about that here after uh, to talk about some of the pros and cons, but the L connector will, will definitely help with um, we're leaving some strain on your your setup. All right, with all that connected, uh, I think we're going we're go for a launch. All right, so we were able to get it up pretty high. I'd say more than the recommended 25 feet, probably 30 or 35. But there you see the unknown kind of sitting up in the leaves. And uh, right now the wire is just kind of dangling across the ground. But we're going to go ahead and take the 80 meter element over there, connect it to the end, and go ahead and get it extended out. Real world results aren't always pretty. But, got the transmission line thrown up. The thing about the green, it is tactical, but you can't see it. Um, it's right here. 
it goes and ties down fortunately into these leaves over here i got a note on that for chameleon later but uh you're not gonna be able to see it here but it goes all the way up into these trees somewhere over there we'll see in a second mission line really is invisible but it's what you want for a tactical environment i'm literally looking at it with my eyes guys and i cannot see it on the camera oh there it is there we go we zoomed into it right there that's where the uh, 40 meter and 80 meter uh, extension goes so it all ties off wow i really just can't see anything on this camera it ties off up here in the tree and it comes down and our transmission line is right here in front of us basically invisible so let's go ahead and uh see if we can't activate this part Kilo Charlie 1, Oscar Victor Mike, this is Kilo November 4, Mike Kilo Bravo. I have U59 into Douglas State Nature Preserve, Park Kilo 7957, Echo Mary 77, Delta Romeo. Thank you very much, 73 to you. CQ Poda, CQ Poda, this is Kilo November 4, Mike Kilo Bravo calling CQ Poda at Douglas State Nature Preserve. Kilo uh, 1, United Radio, first part. Kilo uh, 1, United Radio, this is Kilo November 4, Mike Kilo Bravo, park to park, I am at Kilo Watt Kilo of Delta 2, Sierra Golf Yankee. This is Kilo November 4, Mike Kilo Bravo. You still there? Yeah, I got you. QSL. Hey, QSL, I got you 5-9 into Elizabethtown, Kentucky at uh, Echo Mary 77 Delta Romeo, Park Kilowatt 7957. Hey, 5757 into Buffalo, New York. Uh, copy that. Another New Yorker. Thank you very much, and uh, 73 to you, my friend. Well. Thank you. CQ POTUS, CQ... CQ POTUS, CQ POTUS, this is Kilo November 4, Mike Kilo Bravo calling CQ POTA out of Douglas State Nature Preserve. Kilo Watt 7957. Kilo Charlie 3, Uniform Zulu Kilo. I copy Kilo Charlie 3, Uniform Zulu Kilo. This is Kilo November 4, Mike Kilo Bravo. You're coming in at 5 9 into Elizabethtown, Kentucky at Douglas State Nature Preserve. All right, so that was my first successful POTA activation, and despite a lot of RF issues, the PA-50 is going to get a, uh, a nasty review later. Uh, we were able to, to actually activate the part, and I think I got about 12 or 13 contacts. So uh, I was coming through okay. I just was really distorted, and finally uh, somebody told me my signal was completely way too wide. And when he told me that, I was like, okay, I need to get off the air because I could be causing issues to other operators. So uh, it's time to pack up. Also, it's, it's getting pretty cold out here. My hands are numb. So uh, hopefully we can get all this packed up real quick. I got to say everything did pack up really nicely, um, really fast. I've got a lot of good information from this deployment of what I think about the antenna, what I liked about it, what I didn't like about it. Uh, I made some bullet points while I'm out here. And so I'm going to go ahead and start hiking home. And once we get inside, I'm going to talk about some of the things that um, some of the things I think that could have went better, and um, yeah. But overall, very pleased with this little activation. I uh, just got to get rid of that that uh, amplifier. All right, we're back, and now it's time to talk about what I think about this antenna, the things that I think could be better about it, the things I think uh, are great about it, and who this antenna is for, which I think is the most important part of this video. So we're going to talk about the pros. Uh, the thing that I like most about this antenna and a lot of Chameleon products, but this one specifically is the gauge of wire that they used and the type of wire, this copper ke clad kev Kevlar. Uh, when I was deploying it, there was a lot of instances where I was in the woods, obviously, and it would get caught on branches. And I didn't have any problem with just taking the wire and just pulling it. And I don't think that's something that uh, Chameleon recommends. Uh, putting that much tension on the wire, but there was a lot of instances where even when I was rising this thing It got caught on the tree branch. I just pulled it really hard and it broke the tree branch and the thing rose up Nothing broke everything came out fine when I was running the wire it kept running over trees uh, Under trees because if I was in the woods So I would just pull the wire really hard and it would 
pop it up over the branches. And uh, I was a little bit nervous uh, doing that a couple times, but after seeing that it had basically no effect on the antenna whatsoever, um, I didn't feel bad about it at all. So I really like the fact that I can get it out there and just be rough with a wire. That's one of the big perks about it. Obviously, number two is it's lightweight and backpackable. So uh, if you want a QRO, if you want to take your QRO radio out and you want to do 100 watts uh, and you want a multi-band antenna and don't have a tuner, just like the FT891, this is a great antenna. Uh, and it's, there's not many on the market that's like this. Uh, they're able to hold, uh, handle that much power without a tuner and uh, is also focused toward the lightweight uh, market. I like the fact that it wraps up as, as well as it does. You, uh, the fact that you can have the, uh, the hoist on one side and the wire on one side is pretty thoughtful. Uh, it all wraps up in one package, including my arbalist throw, and uh, it's, a great, it's a great little um, antenna. So let's go on to the things that I think could have went better about this. Uh, so, as for feedback, you'll notice that I have a L-shaped uh, SO239 connector here. Um, I know that probably the decision to, to not have one included or the design of this and not have it on the bottom is probably to reduce uh, either the weight or the, um, the bulkiness of the antenna, but I can't see myself ever uh, whisting this antenna up in the air with a transmission line hanging off the side of it. Um, I don't think that that's, I mean, I, I'm sure you could probably do that, but it's not something I'd ever want to do. So uh, I think this antenna definitely needs some type of L-shaped connector to go right here, or have the, uh, the SO239 connector angled downward, which I know would be kind of difficult with the design of this mounted on the wire winder itself. Uh, maybe it would be nice to have these included in the pack. That way people can automatically just put it on once they get out there. Um, because I don't see uh, an instance where I would want to have the transmission line just kind of angled out and hanging down like that. Uh, especially if you use the recommended transmission line, which is the, uh, I think it's RG58. It's pretty heavy, um, and it was going to put a lot of attention on the antenna. The second bit of feedback that I have is on the listing of the user guide for the antenna, they do recommend the um, RG58 with the uh, the chokes, and if this is angled toward, if this is focused toward the lightweight uh, backpacker uh, type, I think that Chameleon's, I think it's RG316, 316, I think that wire would actually be better suited for an antenna like this, because when I brought this out here, it was, it, it worked great, but this is a lot of wire. Um, it's, it's heavy and more so it's bulky. There's a lot of rubber on it. There's just a lot here. Um, it got in the way more than anything else. And so uh, I think it's great for a, a home use. Um, it's great for maybe even like Poda from the car, but this is a little bit too much to be hiking up a summit um, or maybe even in the woods. So I think Chameleon's, uh, their RG316 cable, I think that would be a great choice for this. Maybe, if, I don't know if it comes in 50 feet, uh, the only problem is there's more loss with that cable. And I think the fact that this is a QRO antenna, uh, it kind of makes up for that because you can afford to have a little bit of loss when you're pushing high power. So I think that would be a good pair of this antenna in the 316. But on their use guide, they do recommend the RG58. I'm going to end my review by saying this. There, uh, there was a delicate balance that had to be made with this antenna, a trade-off between first to reduce weight on the antenna itself, but also to keep the durability that chameleon antennas are typically known for. People who would benefit from something like this kind of are in two different places. One, you are an exclusive QRO operator. You don't care about QRP. Uh, in that case, this antenna would be great because it does QRO and you never have to worry about not pushing, uh, you never have to worry about pushing too much power into it so long as you're within the 500 single sideband and I think 150 digital and maybe 200 uh, CW. If as long as you're within that, that's fine. Another use case for this antenna is if you like QRP, but also you want to be able to do QRO uh, if you like, if you need to. So this would allow you to still have the light, uh, some of the lightweightness of what a QRP antenna would offer. Maybe not as much, it does add a pound or so, uh, but it does allow you to go climb up to 100 watts digital if you'd like, or 250, whatever whatever you would like, Q, uh, basically single sideband mobile, you're going to be able to do, unless you're packing around a giant amplifier. 
Who this antenna is not for is your exclusive QRP operators. I'm talking about the operators that are never going to go over 20, 30, 40 watts because there are other antennas on the market that are more lightweight than this, that are cost less than this, but they will not support this much power. That's why I recommend this to these first two folks that are in the QRO category or the possible QRO category. Don't get a QRP antenna because you'll never be able to push more than, you'll never be able to do the power that you want to do. If you're only, again, if you're exclusively QRP, go with a lightweight QRP only antenna. If you think you ever want to do QRO and you can push more power, this is a great choice for you. And uh, I'll be using this antenna for my QRO activations, for my uh, high power um, presentations in the future. Another thing that's going to come down the road with this antenna is I think it would be great for ALE. And uh, a lot of people have an export ALE with NFED half waves, and I think that's a market a lot of people are missing out on. So anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. I would give a shout out to my YouTube members, but unfortunately I don't have the computer in front of me. Uh, but thank you guys so much for being a member of my channel. I'll, I'll put your names down in the description below. And uh, 73 to you.